if you go to a war zone and you, you're not scared, then stay home because then you, you will get killed. Um, we went to a house, two houses under one roof, huge houses they have, um, quite destroyed, quite damaged houses. So we're talking with one neighbor in this house. It was hot. The summer in, in Kosovo is very hot. So we were standing here talking with the neighbor and then there's a, a guy hanging out the window and um, uh, the wife uh, of this guy is standing here, whatever. So this guy says like, why are you, why are you seducing my wife? <laughs> like, where is this coming from? And he said, yeah, you're seducing my wife. Oh, the, the guy came around and he said, why are you seducing my wife? And he was like, uh, well, whatever, it's hot. So I took my t-shirt off and um, I don't know what your problem is. And he said, well, my wife can see you naked here, so um, what are you doing? You're seducing my wife. And became heated and they started fighting and whatever. So all of a sudden the guy goes away and he comes back with a gun and shoots him through the head. Those guys had been living next to each other, those families, for 25 whatever years. Same ethnicity, same religion. They just got messed up. Okay. And what, what I started realizing is when you, um, when you start working in countries like this, that... In fact, everybody's traumatized. So people don't respond as you would expect them to respond. People snap. Mm. They, 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 they go crazy because, you know, things come back from when they, when they were bombed or whatever. So they snapped and they came back with a gun. Things were solved with a gun. <laughs> that was quite new to me. When there are journalists, they go to the same bar, restaurant, hotel. And I met Michael Ma Michel Maas, who is now correspondent in Indonesia. Yes. And he was, at that time, he was a uh, Balkan correspondent for the Volkskrant. And yes. so I had a talk with him and uh, I said, I'm, I'm looking for a nice, uh, for, for a good translator or a guide. And he said, okay, the guy there in the corner is uh, Naim. He's, uh, I just sacked him, it was like joking, because uh, I'm, I'm going back f to, um, to Holland, and uh, so if you want to take him, I said, he's here crazy, he's the best. So I, he introduced me to Naim, and really, from the first moment on, we got along really well. Okay, he was ethnic Albanian, so he's really supporting the Albanian struggle, but uh, he also was open for the Serbian side. So we had this complaint morning, Wednesday morning, and of course that's asking for problems, but I, I strongly felt that we had to do that. So one morning, this huge guy came in the, in the office, I forgot his name, but and um, so he came in and he started swearing. He was he was mad. He was totally mad. So he came in on Flutra, and my translator um, was listening to him, and he was aiming it at her. And I felt by the way he was talking to her that he was threatening her personally, because he made her responsible for the selection that he did not get a house now and whatever. So. Um, and that got really, really heated. And being threatened is not a nice thing, but threatening my staff is, I get more mad with that. We became friends. And then my balance, I got a bit out of balance because I stayed with his family. Like after a few days, he said, why well, stay in hotels, move in with my, my parents and my, my brother and sister in our house in a little village. I could hear the, the stories firsthand because I was going to the shops, marketplace, walking around with him in the village. So I was really, yeah. Into the people. Into the, yeah, going embedded with, with yeah. the Albanians, which was really uh, a plus. But the, 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 the but disadvantage was that I got, I got step by step, I got a little bit involved. Um, because it feels like if you, if you threaten me, I can deal with that. But if you threaten my staff, I have to stand up for it. So, um, so he pounded out the door again. And I went after him. I said to Flutra, what was he doing? And she said, yeah, he, he threatened me. So I went straight at him, grabbed him at his throat. And I said, you get back into the office. And I threw him back into the office. Like, I, the guy was at least a head. But I was so convinced that you cannot threaten my staff. Like, that's just too far. So I grabbed the big guy, threw him back in the office. And I said, you sit down. I said to Flutra, coffee, coffee. And I said, and now you tell me your story. Yeah, I could see it, like every day in the street people were, were threatened people take prison some some people i knew or met suddenly disappeared were in prison and and also at that time the 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 civil war like the guerrilla war really yeah 
step by step became more worse. So there were attacks on police stations and uh, the soap authorities, or the soap army. Um, they hit back with quite a bit of force. Uh, so I, I went into a village that had where, where things had been burned or bombed or whatever, people arrested. So you see uh, 20 dead bodies and you see a burned house and you see uh, body parts lying in a house that's been burned and, and things like that. And then, of course, you get angry. Why, why are they doing this and why are these people killed? So then he totally calmed down, broke down in tears and told me a story. So he had children. Um, was a single father, had lost everything in the war. His wife had cancer, was dying. Um, he had no job, whatever. It was just one of those stories, as you hear many. You hear on and on and on people that have lost everything, that have lost family members, that lost their house, that got, you know, whatever. That is hard to deal with because yeah. every person you meet has got... A dramatic story about what happened to them and their family. Uh, after Kosovo, I, I visited many war zones, and uh, for, my, for me now it's m much more easy because I think they, they call it in English you got colors on your soul. You, you, you get a, some sort of shield, mm -hmm. and it doesn't touch you so much anymore. Like if, if you see people dying, you think, okay, how can I make my report? Like looking back, I know what, I, what went wrong because I, I, I can also already uh, tell you the outcome of this whole thing that that uh, I, I I got too much involved in their cause and what they were fighting for he really had nothing and of course in, a, in an assessment of, of who needs a house yeah, you have to make a decision somewhere everybody like actually needed exactly everybody needs it but how do you how do you make a selection of the most. the most vulnerables so anyway so I said to him like I realized you need a house after I heard his whole story and he got coffee and he sort of calmed down. He just needed to talk to somebody. He just needed to do his story to, to, to get somebody to listen to him. Because people don't, you know, they're all, you know, totally filled up with emotions and frustrations. They come back home, there's nothing, everything is destroyed. Imagine that there would be something like a time machine I could go back and yes. with the knowledge I have now, uh, I would take the same interpreter. I would, I would work together with Naeem. So then I said to him, like, I realize you need a house, but I've, I hope you realize that I cannot give you a house now, because that means that tomorrow everybody starts threatening my staff and then they get a house in return. That's not how it works. So I said, but I do know that you've got a big wood workshop next to your whatever was left of his, um, his dwelling before. So what we did, and he was a woodworker, but his whole wood workshop didn't work anymore. It was all destroyed. So what we did is we got funding, extra funding, to re-establish his wood workshop. Then he started making all the, the windows, window frames and door frames. And I bought them from him for my housing reconstruction project, instead of buying them somewhere in town. So you have so, to another way. Exactly. So with all the, 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 the generation of money from the woodwork uh, frames and whatever, he could start building his own house.